Good morning. Today on Spotlight, a salute to 50 years of Detroit POW. Interim CEO Robert Jamerson and Detroit Police Sergeant Kirk Kelsey will join us. And later in this program, Lauren Sanders, Ray Waters, and Motown's Robin Terry kick off the fifth annual Detroit Thank You Awards to Detroit businesses. And next week, a very special Spotlight tribute to the late Judge Damon J. Keith. It's Sunday, May the 5th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. Robert Jameson, I'm going to start with you. You're the uh, interim CEO of Detroit Pal, but you've been there for a while. You were in a different capacity. You were COO before? Yep, COO before. I started about a year ago, okay. um, but actually I go way back. So when I was nine years old, that's when I was first introduced to Pal, and now to be here, I'm super excited about it. All right, that. now you're in the seat where that little sign goes, the buck stops with absolutely, me, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, 50 years of Detroit Pal. Uh, that's a milestone. What do you attribute to the success of this organization? For people who, who are out there and maybe have never heard of Detroit Pal, give us a capsule of what they do. Well, I think it starts with just being and bringing, being able to bring the village together, right? So Pal over the years has been a hub for bringing kids and parents and the police department and the community together and through sports. Mm -hmm. So you learn those skill sets of attitude, actions, behavior, and effort, and it translates well into life. So it's generational when you start thinking about Detroit PAL and mm -hmm. the impact that it has. Sergeant Kirk Kelsey, um, that name and relationship with the Detroit police has always been a part of PAL. Uh, what do you and your colleagues get out of this relationship? Well, being police officers and, and especially being a part of the Police Athletic League is, is our part of, of serving and giving back. Uh, you know, of course, we, we protect, but we also serve, and this is our way of serving. Uh, we, we are able to uh, engage our youth, uh, maybe put them in a different path or a different light or something that they may have never seen before, not just necessarily being a police officer, but anything positive to uh, bring back to the neighborhood. So that's that's where the police officers get from it. You've been on the force for about 24 years yes, now? Yes, sir. All right, yes, so you're a vet. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure you've seen a lot and you have a lot of stories during that period of time. But you've really only been associated with Powell the last year and a half or so? Last year and a half. Um, some years ago, I did volunteer uh -huh. a couple of times. I refereed some games, took score at games, Powell games, things of that nature. Right. So this is, this is just for the past year and a half, is the time that I'm fully involved with PAL. Um, what do you personally get out of this? Because you have seen so much on the force, but now to have this relationship, how does it compare to other things that you've done as a police officer? Uh, it, it doesn't compare at all. Uh, the feeling I have working at PAL, it, it's, it's, it doesn't compare to actually working patrol. Uh, I'm actually able to give back uh, and I, you know, I deal with, uh, most, most of the kids I deal with are, um, they don't have much, you know, they, they come from the neighborhoods that, that are filled with crying, um, walking to school, they're passing abandoned homes, but the joy that I get from them, just to see them grow uh, mentally, physically, and, and, and to actually see them smile when they leave us and they're happy to see us, it's, it's, it doesn't compare at all. It's, it's a wonderful feeling. The great work that we really do is out in the community. We're probably in every crevice. And we should say the old Tiger Stadium yes. uh, that sat there for a long period of time. People wonder what in the world we're we going to do at this historic spot. And you guys created a gym. I don't yeah, know. it is. It's uh, it's awestruck when people come in there. So people come from all around during the day. People come from Maryland and Iowa and Ohio who were part of Tiger Stadium. They'll come in there and we say, hey, go on the field, enjoy yourself. They go out there and it's, it's not uncommon to see them rev up and act like they're throwing a pitch right. or something like that. So it is uh, definitely the new landmark, the corner ballpark, but the historical presence where Nelson Mandela was there, the Detroit Lions played there. So it's so much history, um, but it also talks about the rejuvenation of Detroit. We're gonna take a little break. When we come back, uh, I wanna talk about the corporate involvement that you've had, uh, both at the ballpark and then just in general, and then more about the Detroit Police Department and its relationship with Powell. Right, we'll right. be right back. We hope you stay with us.
Welcome back to Spotlight. All right, the date is Saturday, May the 18th. Yes. Uh, there will be a big classic celebrating 50 years of success for Detroit Pal. Uh, Tim Ritchie, who uh, was in leadership position up until just, I guess, a uh, few days ago, uh, you know, got it to this point. He's handing the baton off to you. Uh, what's your goal? Um, the goal is uh, pretty simple, to help kids find their greatness, right? And so when you're thinking about the legacy that he set forth, um, this was planned out. So when we first got together, when I was first leaving Pfizer Pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. Uh, I met with him. That's where you worked before yeah, you came where, to Detroit Pal. Yeah, so I worked there before, and so he came and uh, showed me Old Tiger Stadium. I felt like I was being recruited. Uh -huh. And so during the recruitment, um, he's talking about what he was able to accomplish. $20 million facility, um, the direction that Pal was going, and that he hadn't really thought about his successor. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a big fan of John C. Maxwell, and he always talks about you look at good leaders, mm -hmm. and they're usually looking to find out who's going to replace them. And so for him to have that forethought, for the board to have that forethought, um, I'm just excited to be in that position. Sergeant Kelsey, how do you get other officers involved with this? And, and, and when you sit down with uh, Chief Craig and other hierarchy at the police department, how do you communicate to them the need to be involved in this and that this is a key part of community policing? Well, Chief Craig has, has uh, gave us the approval to um, have the team up program. And that's where officers volunteer their time to come be a part of PAL. They're, they're there for a day. And it, we'll go, right now we partner with schools. That's our main, our main uh, function that we have. We partner with schools. That officer will go to that school. Uh, they'll actually teach a class. Okay. And they'll have a group of students where they teach their class. We just ended our winter term. So this was the basketball season, volleyball season. So after they teach the class, at the end of the day, the officers, uh, they assist in coaching with the teams, with the basketball team, volleyball teams, or, or whichever uh, sport is in season at that time. And it's hugely important for young people, young men and women, to be able to see officers in that type of setting uh, to break down the stereotype and to break down a lot of what has happened in this society in which you grow up in a community and you think police are the bad guy Correct. automatically when that's not necessarily the case and more often than that is not the case. Correct. That, that To quote Officer Norwood, his, his favorite saying is, you know, we want kids running to us and not away from us and this program helps that. It, it helps tremendously. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert, let's talk a little bit about the classic that you have coming yes, up yes. Uh, because I know there's a lot of planning that's been involved in it. Um, you've got all four of the professional sports teams involved, correct? Absolutely, can't think back. I think the Lions, the Pistons, the Tigers, the Red Wings will all be there. All four of the sports owners uh, will be there. So truly excited for them to support Detroit Pal in that and way. some of the uh, current and past sports stars? Yeah, so Willie Horton, um, Lomas Brown, uh, those are just a few that will be there for uh, that session. I mean, people like that, they, they take the time to give back, take the time to come back out and remember where they came from. Sure. And so um, a lot of people may not know, but Willie Horton and I had the same high school coach. Is that so, right? So Ron Thompson, and it's no wonder that we're both doing similar things. <laughs> okay. Know, like all right. All right. All right. You, you're not in the Hall of Fame yet. Though, I'm, right? I'm not in the Hall of Fame, <laughs> but I did go to. But the to, coach tried, yep, right? I have to do this, though. The, the Hall of Fame school, St. Martin de Pours, for sure. Okay. All I right. Good. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Um, uh, let's talk about the uh, corporate sponsorship. You got Meyer. Uh, is a huge sponsor in this, lead sponsor. You got DT Energy, Ralph C. Wilson Foundation, uh, Conway McKenzie. Yep, Ford. Um, so we have a lot of uh, uh, Atwater Brewery. Um, right, so you got all kind of uh, 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 restaurants and catering involved. Uh, Fort Grey Ghost, Mabel Grey, uh, Merrill Detroit, She Wolf. Um, Atwater Brewery. Yeah, it's, That's going to be some good eating. It is. <laughs> it's. Um, th this is what I want to people to start thinking about is that when you come there, it's going to be an experience, right? So it's going to be great music. So we have a band, Trilogy, who's known for playing all types of music to, to touch every genre of music. Um, also, we have uh, different top chefs who are going to have the different types of menus with a ballpark theme. But we were thinking about the kids who just want a hot dog and a hamburger. And so we're going to have that there as well, just to make sure everybody there will have a great time. And the one part, the teams aren't just coming, they're activating the field. So there's going to be oh, um, a, a little miniature ice rink 
um, for the adults and kids to play a little hockey. Um, there's wiffle ball where the Tigers area will be at. There's, there's basketball, a little putt-putt for the Pistons area or the Lions area, and then the Pistons will have some shooting type of opportunity. So it's really going to be a fun event, and you're given to a good cause. Absolutely. Uh, tickets are still available? Tickets are still available. We have VIP tickets where you'll have a panel discussion with some of the athletes and legends that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And then at 530, everyone will transition to the field. Once again, we're going to be highlighting the uh, police department for over Excellent. 50 years of their dedication to not just the community, but to Detroit PAL. Um, and so it's going to be a great event. Uh, I wouldn't want anybody to miss it. Once again, it's one of a kind, all four sports teams coming together. Just to give one perspective for you, some of our programs may cost us $250. We try to make it accessible for the kids Absolutely. that are in the community. So they may only pay $50 to $60. And a lot of times for the kids that can't pay for it, we scholarship them in, right? Yes. We help them to make sure no kid is turned away because you never know what that kid can become and what they may miss by being exposed to sports. It's so much bigger than sports. Yeah. I can speak to it to heart. You know, I feel so much better going home at night knowing that I've actually help somebody, no matter how small it is, I, I, I'm able to help someone. And indeed you have. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Kelsey, thank you so much for coming in. Robert Jamison, thank you for coming in. Thank you, it was an honor. Best of luck as uh, the, the interim CEO, and I'm sure that interim will drop off pretty Absolutely. soon. Absolutely, <laughs> I'm excited, thank you. All right, thanks so much. And we will be back in just a second, and we'll talk about the fifth annual Detroit Thank You Awards. Stay with us. And welcome back to Spotlight as we sort of shift gears here and talk about small business, not sports. Yeah, they may be interwoven at some point along this line. Uh, joining me are three people who are deeply involved in a very important event. Lauren Sanders, Ray Waters, and Robin Terry. Thanks for Thank joining you. me today on Spotlight. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's good having you all. Thank you. Uh, what a good looking group, too. <laughs> yeah, you guys brighten my Not day. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> them all here, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Ray, I'm going to begin with you. Five years ago, uh, Beverly Smith founded the Detroit Thank You Awards. And it was just an idea at that point. She wanted to reach out and thank small businesses that had been in Detroit for years during the good times and the bad times, particularly during the tough times, to say, we appreciate you. Um, five years later, it's getting bigger and better than ever before, maybe surpassed her wildest imaginations. Why is this so important? Well, as you know, Chuck, uh, the Detroit Development Fund is involved in many small businesses here in the city of Detroit. And there has been a groundswell of startup businesses in this city and new businesses that are really starting to make a difference in Brains are everywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and that's a wonderful thing. But when Beverly came to us five years ago, she said, what about the companies that have been here? The ones that have gone through the really downturn and the upturns, and they could have left, or they could have done something else, and yet they're still here. We thought, well, that would be a really, we should honor those companies. Right. We started with 10 or 20, and it just blossomed. Lauren, you're going to serve as MC of the Thank You Awards. I think you emceed last year, maybe even the year before that, yes, losing track. Yes. Um, why are you so excited about this, and what do you hope the people that attend, as well as people who maybe don't get a chance to attend, get out of this? You know, I have to say, as a native Detroiter, um, when Beverly first approached me and she explained the premise, this is to acknowledge businesses, entrepreneurs have, who have stayed in the city through it all. And having lived, I grew up on the northeast side, uh -huh. and I know of those small businesses. Of course, we know of the larger businesses, but these are the businesses that are unique in that they serve the community in a more personal interface. So when she asked me to be a part of this, I knew it was something that I could lend myself to. I've been working independently after being in news, as you right, know, for right. many yeah, years. For, for the other that, station. that are out there saying, I've seen her somewhere before. Right. I can't put my finger on it. It was Channel 4. OK, right. we're saying Channel 4. We won't say it more than once. Okay? <laughs> They're our competition, but beloved competition. Uh, and you were there for a number of years. Uh, yes. But, you know, in working independently, I'm very careful about the organizations that I lend myself to and lend my time to. Um, but the thank you awards. When I decided to participate, I 
got a chance to witness firsthand the interface between businesses. These are business owners who they have known of each other, right. but on this particular special night, they get to know one another. With each and, other. Yeah. and can I tell you some of the stories? Because what we do is we go out and we interview some of the businesses, just a few of them, because there are 50 that are honored. We interview about four. And in those interviews, I have heard some of the most heartwarming, dedicated stories about what business really is, which is relationships. Right. Uh, Gerald McBride. Uh, yes, uh, we're going to have a good does, time. Uh, who's <laughs> famously known, the legendary, I should say, mm -hmm. Gerald McBride, great DJ in this town. Uh, you hear his voice on practically everything. Yeah. And uh, the thing I love most that he does is Saturday night old school house party yes. on uh, <laughs> Mix 92. Um, yeah. 92.3. Um, he's going to serve as kind of co MC with you on this? Absolutely, this is one of the flyers. And you know, because Gerald is so steeped in his um, musical history, we are going to it's have a, a lot of fun. It's a walking encyclopedia yes. of music. <laughs> we are planning on having some fun. This year, we are honoring Motown yeah. as a special theme as a part of the Thank You Awards. The Thank You Awards is not just about businesses coming up, right. but it's also, there's always some great theme and some programming. You know, as Lauren said, our 60 year anniversary, um, but the museum has been around over 35 years. So technically the company itself, you know, with 60 years of um, affiliation and association with Detroit. The two have become synonymous over time. Um, you know, we're just proud to be a part of this and honored to that Beverly thought of us and considered um, our legacy in the city of Detroit. Hold, hold on one second. I got to get to a break. When we come back, I yes. want to pick up with you because I want to talk a little bit more about Motown and why this is so important in this very historic yes. year for Motown as well. We will be right back, as soon as I find my camera, with uh, <laughs> this wonderful group. Uh, this is a historic year for Motown's 60th anniversary. You're getting tributes uh, all across the nation, and I know there's been a wonderful special on CBS, but you've got some stuff coming down the pipeline, too. Yeah, so our big celebration in Detroit will be in September, September 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and it really is, you know, it's a tribute to, you know, Motown's visionary and founder, Barry Gordy, and to this legacy, 60 years of music that really has touched people all over this world and been, you know, such an important part of our culture. Um, and it's something that as Detroiters, we own, right. you know, so. Um, well, you're gonna be profiled for the Detroit Thank You Awards, thanks yes. to Beth Smith and company. Uh, but also talk about the fact that everybody wants to know how's the expansion coming because yes. we, we've been hearing about the money that's been rolling in and yes. Motown is going to get bigger and better. It, it will get bigger, it will get better. I just have to say this, Chuck, Detroit has been so generous to us around the expansion of Motown and Beverly and what she's doing. Um, again, when she called me, I was very honored um, that she recognized our roots in the community, but it was, you know, it was Detroit saying, hey, we value what you bring. And the support that we've gotten for expansion from Detroit has been exceptional. Um, there's some What's wonderful What's kind of the gifts. timeline? Are, are you to a point where you give people a little bit of timeline it's, when they're going to see those shovels going in the ground? It's when we raise the money, Chuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are you well, almost there? Are you, are you we getting are close? We are getting there. We okay. have had um, tremendous success. September will be um, a really pivotal point um, in, in expansion, in announcements, in timing. Um, so I'd say stay tuned for that. Okay, all right, but we're getting closer. We're, we're getting, getting closer. All right. Uh, Ray Waters, uh, you're so involved with starting, helping people start small businesses and maintaining those small businesses. But as you look at what's happening now in Detroit, uh, what's sort of your vision of where we're going to be 10 years from now? Well, based on what we're seeing with, with the companies that we're working with and many of the people we collaborate with, I think what we're seeing, Chuck, is a revitalization and stabilization of neighborhoods in Detroit that are outside of downtown proper. Okay, and focus on think, the neighborhoods. We think that's a critical piece as we go forward, as you know, the mayor and the city does. But putting companies and affordable housing in these neighborhoods like West Village is where I see this will be going, and it would not surprise me 
uh, 10 years from now, if the neighborhoods that we looked at today mm -hmm. uh, are going to be, we're going to have retail hubs in those neighborhoods, we're going to have more uh, affordable housing. I just see it moving out to the neighborhoods, which we think is a critical piece uh, because that's where it kind of all started out that's in the neighborhoods. And we see more of that happening. And there's fortunately a lot of other people, including our funders, who agree mm -hmm. that let's focus on those neighborhoods. Well, a lot of people say if downtown and midtown are the heart of the city, the neighborhoods are the soul of the city. Absolutely. Yes, uh, absolutely. Lauren, uh, absolutely. you're going to, I know you're going to recognize a lot of people that evening, but a few people you wanted to recognize. Well, absolutely. Uh, to pick up on what today. Mr. Waters and what you are pointing out, when you look in the neighborhoods, and you understand that that really is the core, the heart of what's happening because people are actually connecting on a human level in terms of businesses and businesses are really relationships. Some of these relationships have been going on since 1969. Ziedman's Jewelry, everybody, yes. Ziedman's, they're gonna be honored this year. Um, we've got Baker's Bible and Bookstore. They've been there since 1993 servicing the community. So you didn't have to drive out you know, too far to a borders in, in the past. We've got um, Seven Mile Food Superstore, Kenneth Crumpton, Crump's Hair Care Clinic, uh, Ace Petroleum, Caju Cafe. They've been there. Uh, they've got great live entertainment. Um, James H. Cole. Cole's 100 home. years. Right. 100 years. And they've years. been there. Absolutely. 100 years? 100 years. 100 wow. years. Wow. Yeah. That was the most interesting thing on the ones that I attended, uh, some of the early Thank mm -hmm. You Awards is businesses that have been there for 100 years right. or 75 years or 50 years and you're like my gracious just think about what they have seen, seen. and so all the ups and, and downs through those times yeah. room, they are so gracious and happy that someone is taking the time to acknowledge their efforts over the years and like i tell my children i've got three boys it's only as important as you make it so right. to stop for this particular evening and mark this and make this a milestone. The business is appreciated and there's new interface and new connectivity. So I'm well, happy and to be a part of it. It's gonna be fun. Robin's gonna be it's, there. It speaks to, you know, stabilizing neighborhoods, mm -hmm. right. right? I mean, on the boulevard alone, you mentioned Kohl's and there's Brazelton's floors. Right. I mean, those are businesses that have been there, you know, up to a hundred years who have helped to stabilize that Northwest Goldberg community. Right. Yeah. And Motown Museum just happens to be, we happen to be one of the anchors. And the important roles, you know, I I think back to Barry Gordy had that vision of starting yes. this yes. great thing, but Esther Gordy Edwards, your grandmother, uh, what would have happened if she said, we're going to leave a piece of it here and make sure we preserve uh, that Motown Museum to be able to have that connection in that story. These are some of the stories and that's the type of thing that we'll be talking about for the well, Thank You Awards, so it's, it's great. Yeah. It's ours and we got to preserve it. Yep. Yes. Robin Terry, Ray Waters, Lauren Sanders, thank you so much for joining us thank and you. Uh, thank you, Chuck. best of luck with thank the you. fifth thank annual you. Detroit Thank You Award. May 15th, thank we're going to be partying. We'll be there. It's going to be so much fun, I'm telling you, right? All right. Sounds great. <laughs> All right, and we want to thank you at home for joining us. And just a reminder that next Sunday, we'll have a special tribute on Spotlight to federal judge Damon Keith. Have a great day.